Greetings to you, Goddess Body, Mind, and Spirit community. This is Tara Olafemi, your Goddess Guru, here to share a word of inspiration with you along your path to self-realization. It doesn't matter what your religion is or not. It doesn't matter what guru you follow, what spiritual book you read. Everything points us in the direction of knowing the truth of who we are. And this is foundational to everything I talk about. Self-realization. Knowing who you are. And of course, we know that we are not body. Our body is a tool that was necessary for us to have in order for us to have this uh, physical experience. Do you know anyone without a body who can fully engage the world? <laughs> oh, let us bless our bodies. Great aspect of ourselves, but the least, the least of who and what we are. Um, but so many of us have our identity steeped in that name that was given to us at birth in this body. And we are so much beyond that. The question is, a lot of people say, yes, I agree. I'm more than a body. I'm a limitless being, but do we operate that way? So let's just go on ahead and figure out this thing who we are and it will enjoy life even more. Um, we're also on a path to self-mastery. Seeming deficits maybe are really um, great route to mastering aspects of ourselves that need to be mastered. So self-realization, self-mastery, those are two key um, principles, whatever you want to call them, that, that you will always hear me talking about. Um, this is the divination for the year 2013. Oh my God, we made it through 2012. I only know my experience um, here in the United States. I've watched the world. 2012 was a trip or has been a trip because we're not out of it yet. Wow. Anyone that was alive paying attention even a little bit will say this has been <laughs> Wow, a wow year. Uh, wow in a good way. Wow in a not so good way at times. So um, I just feel like we need to go into 2013 um, more aware. So this is what I want to talk about. Um, in addition to self-realization, and self-mastery. Um, I like to talk about four keys to self-mastery that were taught to me by one of the wisest people in my life, my godfather, Baba Colioso. He's also known as Nashi Prakriti. Um, I'm not good with Arabic words sometimes. Uh, but what was taught to me very simple but powerful keys that many of us don't use, but if we do begin to use these uh, tools, they'll be very beneficial. So the first key to self-mastery is um, awareness. The second key is devotion. The third key to self-mastery is ritual. And the fourth key to self-mastery is faith. So throughout the year, I'll go over these more. Uh, this video will be super long if I talk about any one of these too long before I even get to the actual reading for 2013. But what I want to say is that if you begin to even explore these elements a little bit, especially if you use them, you will find uh, great things will happen. So when I think about how does one become self-aware, oh, excuse me, self-realized, um, awareness is key. Aware, many of us are walking unaware. 
And so what's important for us is to take the steps to walk aware so that we can see all aspects of ourselves. Some of this is paying attention to um, this physical persona that we engage daily. (laughs) What are the pros and cons of this aspect of ourselves? What are the areas that um, are strong and then the areas where we need improvement or transformation? Um, But also, when we think about awareness, the more we are aware of the present moment, the more we can become aware of our inner guidance. Our, um, the more we can become aware of aspects of ourselves that we can't see, we can only experience. Aspects of ourselves that maybe we don't know they're there. But if we simply take time to observe and pay attention, we can... Um, become, we can awaken those aspects of ourselves, which has more to do with, like I said, awareness. Um, Being present in the moment, to me, that's the most simple way for me to understand how do I walk aware. Um, And so just stay present in the moment. Be present in the moment. Walk aware. And you will learn so much more. Um, It's very important that we don't um, stick our head in the sand or um, it's important that we um, don't do things to make us less aware. And oftentimes when we're experiencing negative situations, that's one of the best times to be aware. See, what divine law dictates is that we co-create our reality. We have everything to do with the reality in which we live. And so if we don't like something, it's important for us to be aware, to be very present all the time. Because then we can begin to look at what is causing this. Because a lot of times, what we're experiencing, we don't even know is there. It's programming that we received when we were young, We've received um, just from the world in general, and we have adopted this programming. It's a part of who we are to a certain degree. We don't even know it's there, and we just operate from this place. But when you are aware, then you can see it, and when you can see it, you can change it. Um, The next key that I want to talk about is devotion. Devotion is so important. Now, the thing that we have to think about with devotion is we all are devoted to something. (laughs) The question is, what are you devoted to? Are you devoted to your self-realization process? Are you devoted to self-mastery? Whatever your religion is, are you devoted to the the high spiritual teachings of your religion or are we devoted to lower, more um, base thinking, um, ways of being, being experiences? What are we devoted to? And when you look at what you're devoted to, it will um, begin to help you to understand why you're getting the results that you're getting in your life. The question is, What do you desire in your life? When we're talking about self-mastery and self-realization, the question is, are you devoted to knowing who you are? Are you devoted to mastering those things within you? And all you have to do is look at what you do every day. And that will let you know what you are devoted to. So we want to be devoted, devoted to things that are Um, of a higher vibrational positive experience than to the lower, more um, base things. And base is not bad. (laughs) It's just, you don't want to live there all the time. I mean, base was created for a reason. You wouldn't know what what was high spiritual teaching if you didn't have base um, things, low energy things going on. Um, You know, it's interesting. We always have to have a contrast. That's one of the best things someone told me. Contrast is good. 
it's very important to have the contrast because when you have the contrast, then you know one versus the other. If you always have abundance, you never experience poverty, you don't know the difference. You only know abundance. There's not even, I mean, there's no, it's just like breathing. You don't really know you're breathing until you lose your breath. You don't really appreciate that breath. Um, so the contrast is good. Um, high spirituality, low base thinking, you know, no judgment on any of it. Um, but the question is, what are you devoted to? Don't get frustrated with the re results in your life if you're not devoted to your goals. If you're not devoted to that which you say you want, just be honest with yourself and look at what you're devoted to. But devotion is a key to self-mastery. You have to be so devoted to your spiritual path. And that's one of the messages that I'm sharing this year, that it is very important for us to um, engage our spiritual practices. I remember <clears throat> hearing a message from the ancient mothers and they said, uh, if you don't engage your spiritual practices, don't cry because that's on you. You need to work your spiritual practices. When you work your spiritual practices, life isn't necessarily perfect, but you definitely feel way more equipped to handle it. Okay? So be devoted to your spiritual development. Be devoted to your spiritual evolution. The next key is ritual. This is the key to self-mastery. Ritual is all about, well, I loved what my um, godfather, um, Baba Kaleosa, taught me. And what he taught me is that a lot of people want to take vacations. They want to get away. But really, and, and then we start talking about recreation. People want to do things that are fun. Well, when we create these rituals, they, in fact, these daily spiritual rituals, maybe a weekly spiritual ritual that you engage in, could be monthly or yearly things that you do. It, it's, you know, so many different ways to do this, but for sure daily. What are the rituals you engage in? We need these rituals because in the essence, whatever it is that we experience when we're on that vacation and we're in involved in recreation, that's what we get from when we engage our spiritual practices every day. Plus they keep the spiritual teachings um, heightened in our awareness. They rejuvenate us. We need to take time every day. And it doesn't have to be at any one particular time of day. As a matter of fact, your entire day could be one big spiritual practice. You know, um, I heard my husband preach a sermon. And he talked about how there were just maybe three or four people in the Bible who never died. They were taken up. Uh, they had just ascended. And one was Enoch. And what it said when he, he said when he studied it, the only thing that was different about Enoch is that Enoch walked with God. And I, I just thought that was so powerful. It wasn't this great spiritual work that he did and this mighty feat and he wasn't doing all of that. No, Enoch walked with God. He walked present and aware of the divine presence the ever divine presence from which we all emanate, extend from, come from. Enoch walked with God. Enoch was present and aware. And that can be our daily spiritual practice. Walk aware of the divine presence, however you define that divine presence, or don't. But walk aware of that thing out there that's greater, that wisdom, that power. Make it, make it a daily ritual to do that. If you don't work your spiritual practices, oftentimes you may find life will crumble around you and you're a mess. <laughs> so rituals are important. What are your rituals? What are your daily spiritual practices? Do that and watch life improve. And if you want to, test it. Don't do it. 
see what life is like, then engage your practices again and see what life is like. For me, they're so much better when I'm on it than not. Um, okay, and the last key is faith. You know, some people see faith as belief. That's not faith. No, faith is knowing. So we want to walk in faith. And remember, we, we all have faith in something. What do you have faith in? I bet you you have faith in your ability to do certain things. For most anyone, if I said, stand up, walk over to the door, they would have faith. They wouldn't doubt it. Well, that's how we need to be about um, spiritual teachings and our spiritual truth. Why are we wavering day in and day out? You know what? The other thing that I'm learning is we have to have belief in ourselves. See, if we, and, and the path of self-realization, understand that we are the energy of God in a body. And, and people can argue about it if you want to. I don't know how anyone could see that everything doesn't come from God. If it comes from God, it's God. Because God is not form. God is energy. God is consciousness. And so God, the greater being, some kind of way, I say we chose this, inserts itself into a body. Everything is God. Everything is God. Okay? So if we are imbued with God energy, then we should have faith and belief, number one belief, in ourselves. People say, oh, God could do anything. Okay, well, let's talk about the God in you. I don't know how all the religions describe it. I'll just give a few. Ifa says the Ori. Christianity says the Holy Spirit. In the Hindu tradition, we talk about Ganesha. We could talk about you know, the, we can talk about the omniscience. The omniscience in us, the divine wisdom in us. If we believe God can do it anything, why would we not believe that in us? You're breathing. What are you doing to breathe? And if you have a machine that's breathing for you, there was a time for most all of us, we didn't have a machine that was breathing for us. We were just breathing. Okay, that's the power of the divine within us. If you ever need proof, look at you. You are walking, living, and breathing. You need proof of the power within you. Look at how your body is operating, even though many of us treat our bodies like crap. But our body still rejuvenates itself. It still keeps going. Sometimes even it's operating on reserve. It can barely function. But the body will regenerate itself. It will keep going Fight great obstacles to health. This is a powerful example of the divine within us. So, why would we not believe in it? So important for you to believe in yourself and have faith in yourself. Faith is knowing it. People say, I believe God can do it all. Know it. Know it. Stand on the knowing and, and walk in it. Just like Enoch, you know, walk with God. Walk with the truth that the divine can do it all. We must have faith. I teach faith in spiritual law. Have faith in spiritual law. If you have faith in spiritual law, you will find it only can work. That's it. There's no discussion. That's one of the things I like about when we look at spirituality as a science. Let's not argue. Let's, 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 let's show some proof. This is the law by which I say is divine law, and I'm living in it. I'm walking in it. Everyone I know that has faith in their spiritual book gets results. So we don't want to just talk. We really want to live this thing out. Faith is knowing and living it. And you will see the proof of it. And when you have faith, you can't help but master who you are. Self-mastery is so important and key. And those four keys to self-mastery will assist you in great ways. I will end for now and start a second video um, that will have the divination for the year 2013. If you have any questions, please make sure you um, post them, send them to me privately, however you want to, and I'll put information 
uh, in the comment box or the info box for this video. And um, also, if you would like personal divination for any reason, but including 2013, please just contact me. I'd be more than happy to take care of that for you. It would be an honor for me to do that reading for you. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Peace and blessings.